Keegan O'Toole out there with the Brownigals and Bird. The Killer Bees are back for Illinois. And for Illinois, the coach, Mike Poeta, in his fourth season, first time his Illini has started out 3-0 in duels. And, and nationally ranked with the senior-laden team, right? So last year, Luke Luffman didn't wrestle, was hurt. Lucas Bird, Zach Bonigle, Danny Bonigle, all took Olympic red shirts. So it was very interesting. He got them all back, and now they're rated 12th in the country. In this first matchup, Gage Walker against Kalen Riley. Gage Walker, the true freshman out of Jay, Oklahoma, from Bixby High School. Kalen Riley, the junior out of Libertyville, Illinois. He went to Libertyville High School in Illinois. Gage Walker, 3-3 three and three so far to start his collegiate career, 0-2 in duels so far. Kalen Riley in his in his career, 13-9 and nine. in duel, he, duels. He is 0-3, still looking for that first duel victory for Kalen Riley. Yeah, he, he wrestled in the duels, didn't come out strong, but then he wrestled next day to German Classic and rolled off three victories. So he's on a little bit of a roll here. So last three matches, Kalen, 3-2 three, three and two on the year, wrestling the freshman here, and is this stage too big for Gage Walker? We will see as he will take the first shot. Good avoidance by Kalen Riley. He'll take another shot. Yeah, interesting position here, Tony. You, you know, don't want to be underneath him very long. He's got that far over. He's trying to block, going for that, that quick little throw by, and they're back up to their feet. Walker tries to snap him down. Kalen Riley strong on his feet. Hey, you know, you know, Kalen Riley transferred from the Citadel getting his opportunity with Ramas on hurt. He's trying to make the most of it. The junior, he said, from Libertyville, Illinois. Interesting interesting story here about Kane Riley. His dad was Mike Poeta's assistant coach when Mike was in high school. So, you know, the Riley family, Poeta family go way back. Nice little attempt. Yeah, Kalen, Kalen Riley, his dad, Chris, was Coach Poeta's assistant coach in high school. Poeta then coached. Kalen Riley at his youth club and as Gage Walker gets a hold of the leg and tries to take him down. Kalen Riley does hit the mat. That's a three-point takedown for Gage Walker in the first points. A of nice the little high crotch there. Nice little high crotch there to a single and Gage Walker gets on the board early. Nice quick finish. You see how he got in there deep, Tony? And he was in deep and he changed off from a single to a double and that's what you want to do. And he gets on the board early, as you said, 3 nothing. The junior here trailing the freshman. Both these wrestlers looking for their first collegiate dual victory. Both of them 0-2 in their career. Actually, Kalen Riley's 0-3, pardon. And, you know, interesting thing about Gage Walker here. You know, he comes in very highly ranked. We said four-time Oklahoma State. Oklahoma, great state for wrestling. Bixby in Oklahoma is one of the top-rated high schools in the country each and every year. You know, 59th wrestler rated overall by Matt Scouts. I mean, so, you know, this kid can do it all. Two-time two Fargo All-American. He's had two attempts at duels so far this season. Lost by decision to number eight, Steve-O Poulin of Northern Colorado. Oh, this is a As bad he, position. He does get on top of Kalen Riley, still trying to escape from that ref's position. You know, Tony had that deep claw in there, and he rolled that half. He tried to roll him on his back there, and he almost had Kalen Riley in a very, very dangerous situation. And, and this is a match here that whoever doesn't come out on top the coach wants to keep it to a three-point match and in wrestling anything under eight point margin is three anything from eight to 15 is four over 15 points is that tech fall and then six is that pin and as we we're trying to figure out this duel all these points are going to matter absolutely in their last duel Kalen Riley oh, fell indeed. to number one ranked Richard Figueroa of uh, Arizona State and gave Illinois a early 6-0 deficit they ended up coming back and winning that duel and that was a big win for him nationally ranked arizona state at the time kind of came in you know a little bit favored over illinois but illinois showed their senior leadership came through kaylin up to his feet looking to score here tony with 56 seconds to go in the first period gage gets a hold of that waist again and they're out of bounds once again just under a minute, 45 seconds left, 46 seconds left here in this first period of this first matchup of the night here in the Lot 31 Stadium Club tent, first of its kind. Yeah, 48 seconds here, and, and so crucial these next 48 seconds is Kalen Riley tries to get a point, get that escape. He's riding that deep claw ride, some call it a mills. There's some back points there maybe. Dangerous situation, Kalen trying to come. Walker doing a great job on top, Tony. Well, Kalen Riley did a... Nice job of avoiding, avoiding back points there as well as he gets back to his knees. He'll try to take a step up. But like you said, Gage Walker just 
has a hold on Kalen Riley. Kalen Riley does not know how to escape. He's riding that deep claw ride, Ren. It's very tough to get out of, and Kalen's doing the right thing, trying to create some motion here, trying to create some space. Throws in the leg in there. Pike, he lets it go. Riley tried lift, to, they're out. Riley tried to roll out of there, but Walker held on, and they go out of bounds once again. Only eight seconds left here in this first period. Yeah, th this is a tough first period, and, and you know the freshman showing some moxie here against the junior, trying to get Missouri, Missouri on the board early. Right back to that claw ride, Tony. Will Kalen Riley get the last second escape? He will not. We'll go to a second period. Gage Walker up three to nothing. A 3 0 first period, you know. I'm very impressed with the freshman. You know, he's got a minute and 46 riding time. So he's got a, he's got a point locked up. As long as that doesn't go under a minute, the riding time will increase. Riley goes down again here. Very interesting, Tony. Couldn't get out in the first period. Let's see what he can do here. Well, Kalen Riley definitely knows adversity. Placed first in the Journeyman's Classic at 125 earlier in the season in Illinois' first tournament. Yeah, he came through, like I said, you know, they had the duels on, on Saturday, then the rest of the tournament on Sunday. So he had a tough Saturday, but came back and won three in a row. Had a little bit of momentum, but Gage Walker shutting it down here. Nice lift and bust, and they're back to the mat, Tony. Very stern bring back to the mat by Gage Walker. There's some back points. They'll count out. A nice Maximum tilt back here. Points. Kalen Riley keeping his shoulders above the mat, but there they go. It's gonna he's be back to his. He's back to his knees. That's going to be four points, Tony, on a tilt. That's a near arm tilt. A very common move on top here. Now he's trying to work that two on one wrist ride. And he opens up a 7-0 lead with a minute 18 to go in the second period. It's, to me, that, that was an interesting choice to go back down, right? Go back down after getting, you know, rode out for a minute and 46 seconds to go back down, but they, they seen something there, thought he can get away, and, and Gage Walker and the Missouri Tires took advantage of it with four quick back points. One minute remaining. One minute left here in this second period. Riding time already in favor of Gage Walker. He won't have to worry about that. Galen yeah, so, Riley just steps out. So, so right now, if we're looking at the duel, right, it's 7-0, but riding time makes it 8, so that's a four-point start for Missouri. And that's the start they were looking for from the freshman. That's uh, that's if Gage Walker can hold on for another two minutes and 49 seconds. Yep. Kalen right back up to his feet. Still hasn't been able to create that space to try to get away and get that one point escape. He's on his back again on that near side tilt. More there, back points. There's the back points. He'll get the maximum of four right there. 11 to nothing, 12 nothing with riding time in favor of the freshman Gage Walker. And it looks like Caleb Riley's running out of juice. Yeah, extremely, extremely impressed with this freshman. True freshman, as we said, from Oklahoma. And he's putting it on Kalen Riley right now. It's back standing position. He, he's letting him stand up, Tony. And he's looking for that near side tilt once again. See how he pinches that knee, looking for that cross wrist ride for that tilt. Throws the leg in here. Kalen Riley has gotten to his feet multiple times, has not been able to get that el elusive first escape and there's the end of the second period gage walker up 11 to nothing so the, the riding time as you said is locked up right so it's a 12-0 match it's it's three minutes and 46 seconds so they're gonna put gage walker down and i'll tell you what they're looking for here tony they're looking for an escape and a takedown and try to get that tech fall they're looking for that that one point escape make it 12 nothing and that three point takedown will finish the match Sweeps that leg out immediately, but Kalen Riley brings him to his shoulder. A very similar position as Gage had Kalen in, looking for that cross wrist tilt and see what he can do here. You know, he could ride him this whole period and still not gain a point. And Gage Walker would be fine with that. That would earn his team a major decision, but like you said, they're looking for that tech fall. That would, like you said, they need an escape and a takedown. And, and, and the clock is 127. I, I think at this point, right, if, if you're being tactical at this point, if you can keep it this 12-0 match, that's exactly what they're looking for at this point. You see Gage, Gage Walker with a wide base. He gets to his feet. Little hand fighting on his waist, and there's the escape. Gage Walker with 12 points, 13 with the with the riding time. One more takedown will get his team the tech ball. Yeah, and, and that's He's that's got a minute he, to do it. That's what they're looking for here. 
You can hear Coach Smith here in the corner trying to push the pace for that, uh, that last takedown. Hand fighting going down, hand fighting happening. Kalen Riley just trying not to be taken down. He'll take a shot actually. Get him up off his feet and still in a neutral position. No takedown yet for Kalen Riley. That was a good attempt though. That was a great scramble by Gage Walker. Great scramble there to avoid that takedown. And he gets out of bounds. Oh, he calls him for warning, stalling, one, one red. But, you know, as you said, Tony, it was a great attempt. A nice little duck under, peek out, they call it. Went and looked for Kayla Ryan, was in deep. And Gage Walker did a nice scramble to avoid that takedown. Well, with the riding time, Gage Walker still a takedown away from a tech fall. Kayla Ryan just have to, has to survive another 20 seconds. 20 seconds here, you know, at the stadium club in lot 31. There's a shot attempt. He's got that leg, that right leg of Kalen Riley. 10 seconds, Tony. And now Kalen Riley's in vert vertical. He has to last another three seconds to not get tech ball. Now he's on his back. Will they give him the? No. They will not give him the takedown. So a major decision and the first dual victory for Gage Walker's collegiate career. Yeah, 13 and one here. Gage Walker, a 13 to one victory over Kalen Riley. Gets Missouri Tigers a 4-0 lead heading into that 133 pound match with Lucas Bird, number five in the country, against Cade Moore. Lucas Bird actually number two per inter, oh, Matt. That you, you, they versus. just raised him up after that big victory he had against in an in a exhibition match against Nasir Bayless. Any rankings you see are per inter, Matt. They were updated on the 19th. Here at 33, we will see number 30, Cade Moore, versus number two, Lucas Bird. Cade Moore out of Allen, Texas. Allen High School, he's the redshirt sophomore. 19 and 12 in his career, six and four in duels. Lucas Bird out of Cincinnati, Ohio, LaSalle High School, he's a redshirt senior. He's 80 and 15 in his career. Only two losses in his career in duels, 31 and two overall. Two-time All-American Lucas Bird and he's back, right? Part of that Killer B trio with Bronicles and, and Lucas Bird back. And, and this is a big match here for Lucas. Came off and, and, and not, it doesn't reflect in his record, right? But he beat the number two ranked kid in the, in the country from Little Rock, Nasir Bailey. You know, and that vaulted him up into that ranking. So Lucas on a hot streak, but did wrestle last week. Lucas, one of plenty Illinois wrestlers who started this season 6-0 and and 3-0 and in duels. He's got a hold of that leg. And a scramble will take him out of bounds. Still 0-0. So, so one thing we haven't really talked about in this venue, it, it's a great setting, but generally there's a lot more space out of bounds right so the out of bounds uh, it looks fine on the sides but at the head table and sitting right in front of us it's a little narrow right and so generally if you have one finger in you're good but you see right there because they got close to the camera stage they, they called it out so yeah. hopefully that doesn't come into play but just wanted to mention that tony that is the case for both teams both teams agreeing to be a part of here last year they wrestled in missouri's theater as Lucas Bird trying to get around the body of Cade Moore he's got, got his head there now he gets his left arm around his torso and he gets his leg around for the three-point takedown the first point the first takedown for Illinois tonight so that was a nice head pinch takedown he had that head pinch tight and he's right back to that that half ride here that Gage Walker was successful in and he kept it tight and just kept a circle around until his head popped out and got that first takedown as you said both these wrestlers have qualified for the NCAA tournament in their career. Lucas Bird has done it three times. He's finished fifth place in the in the country twice. Brings him right back to the mat. Now they're on the corner. They should have enough room to go fully out of bounds here right in front of us. As you said, two-time All-American Lucas Bird in control of this match against Cade Moore. The redshirt sophomore, and you mentioned Allen, Texas. Now, for you MMA fans out there, one of the most famous wrestlers in NCAA history and now an MMA fighter, the home of Bo Nickel. There you go. <laughs> the home of Bo Nickel, you know, so so Bo Nickel, Cade Moore is looking to make some noise here right behind you. Two-time Texas State champion, owns the record for the fastest pin in Texas, right? Yeah. They there will we go. go. They will go out of bounds. Cade Moore will take the bottom here with 32 seconds here in the first period trying to escape. 
Cade Moore, like you said, out of Allen, Texas. His career record, 19 and 12. This season, he started out two and three and 0 and two in duels. So still searching his first duel victory of the season as Bird tries to get a leg sweep. He will fall to a knee and reverse back to his back and keep Moore on the ground. Moore, his dream job is to become an architect. Yeah, it was very interesting there. Cade Moore was looking for a switch. And, and Lucas stopped it, you know, forward pressure on that, that move there. Now he's back looking for that wrist ride. And, and so there's some strategy here, Tony, right? So, like, Lucas is on top. He's got a minute 39 seconds riding time. Similar to the first period of Gage Walker, right? 3-0, no back points. Wearing him out on top, hopefully looking for those back points as Gage Walker in the first match. Lucas looking to turn the ties, but he's going to take down to start the second period. Lucas Bird will try to get that extra point. He'll take the bottom as Cade Moore will try to ride him for two minutes. I don't expect Cade Moore to let Lucas Bird up here in this situation. Lucas Bird, another wrestler for Illinois who took first place at the Journeyman Classic earlier, is one of five wrestlers who did so for the Illini. Yeah, and we're gonna, we're gonna see all them guys tonight coming up and very very interesting call here I mean basically a stall call he's, he's not getting out to the side not doing anything and that was the call a good call here for Illinois as Lucas is looking to get out and push the pressure once again a quick move by Lucas Bird but Moore still on his torso he'll posture up and just put all his body right on that right leg of Lucas Bird Lucas Berg strong with his hands though in his left leg. He has a good base now. Cade Moore trying to push that head away. He's got that ankle pinch, and that's what the referee's doing. He's he got to try to do something here. He's trying to create some action, but he's not really doing much on top with that leg pinch, trying to get that leg in. And there's the escape for Lucas Bird. He's up four to nothing. Riding time back down to 43 seconds in favor of Bird. You know, you know, two of Cade Moore's losses came against nationally ranked opponents too. Tony against Dominic Serrano, Northern Colorado, and then Connor McConnell of Virginia Tech. So, and those were close matches, 3-0. Three, three oh. Serrano's very highly ranked. That was a major, but he, he kept a number 10th ranked McConnell to a 3-0 match. And you know, and, and after seeing his teammate open up a 4-0 lead against Illinois, he's trying to keep he's trying to keep it under eight points himself. Well, in their last duel against Arizona State, Kalen Riley fell to number one ranked Figueroa. And Illinois came back and won every single match after that. Lucas is in a deep here on a single. He's trying to get him back on the mat. No space here. Tries to leg sweep. Now reaches with that right hand for that left ankle. He's keeping his toes in. And there's a three-point takedown for Lucas Bird. He's up seven to nothing. And now they're calling him out of bounds. Very patient at work by Lucas Bird. They had that single in. Was, he knew he was close to the edge of the mat, was trying to pull him in. Once you see that hand come up to the waist, Tony, that's generally when the ref will give him control, and that's what he did. As right in front of the table, you and I both at the same time. Three! With just one second on the clock, they will go to period number three. Lucas Bird in up seven to nothing. 49 seconds of riding time, just needs 11 seconds here on top, and he'll gain an extra point for a major decision. Yeah, and, and not surprising that Cade Moore took down here. He's looking to score that point, right? So it'll be a 7-1 match. But, and if he gets away, Lucas needs to go to work right away on another takedown. Now, now take, take into consideration, Cade Moore has already been warned for stalling once. There's the one-minute riding time for Lucas Bird. So that 7 to nothing score is really 8 to nothing unless Cade Moore can get up and now to his back. But they will scramble almost out of bounds. Bird keeping his left ankle in. Plenty of room on that side of the mat, Tony. As you see the, the dinner floor over there. Like you said, dinner and movie, dinner and drinks. What a nice time. Looking for back points. That was a great reversal by Cade Moore. I thought he was just going to scramble for the escape, and he actually transitions into a reversal, gets two points for Missouri. Yeah, and that's very interesting because it's a 7-2 match, and he could get riding time off the clock here if he could just ride him for 22 more seconds. Lucas really needs to get up and out and back on his attacks. Well, a momentum shifting move there by Cade Moore now puts Lucas Bird on bottom and now they're talking it over with the official. Like you said, Bird at 122 riding time. 
now under 120, just 15 seconds of riding time. And now another reversal, and there's another two points for Lucas Bird. So a reversal for Moore, and now a reversal for Bird. Now Bird trying to take him down to the mat. Instead, he'll just let him up. Cade Moore with the escape. But what a play by Lucas Bird to get the momentum right back. He, he, need, he needs this takedown, Tony. Right back to that tough ride, and he gets it. There's that three-point takedown. And now he's going to let him go and try to go back to work and score more. He's looking for that tech fall. He's got 43 seconds to do so. He's got that major decision wrapped up. Not, not quite yet. He'll push it's him out of bounds four. as Coach Mike Poeta will catch him. Now give him a point, Illinois, for stalling. 14-4 essentially here. So he needs another, he needs two more takedowns though. 33 seconds can be a tough window, but the leadership of, ah, he's in deep, but a good scramble position by Moore. Let's see if he can finish. Look for that hand to come to the waist, Tony. But Bird has that right ankle of Moore, and he brings him right back up to his foot. And now Moore in trouble. Finds him out with his left hand, but. Looking for a foot sweep here. And there, there he finds it, does Bird. Another three-point takedown with five seconds to spare in the match. That should be the end of it. Lucas Bird with riding time will win 17-4 to in the major decision for Illinois. He starts his season 4-0 in duels. And he gets the Illinois crowd back into it. They're all on their feet here, and you can hear it here in the Lot 31 Stadium Club. We will... Have a quick two minute break. We'll be right back for as we will get to the 141 matchup. Number 18 ranked Josh Edmond in black and gold. And for Illinois, it's the number 15th ranked Danny Puccino. This match took place last year in the dual meet, and Edmond jumped out to a big lead. And Danny made a comeback, but it ended up being 10 5. So two very explosive wrestlers here. Very explosive wrestlers. Danny will take the quick shot. He'll get a hold of that right ankle. Sorry to interrupt you, but like you said, two very explosive wrestlers getting off to an explosive start early on. Uh, nice nice little reattack here. And now scramble position. Edmonds is very good in this position from Detroit, Detroit Central Catholic powerhouse in Michigan. Right down the street from Ann Arbor, and he ends up in Missouri. Both these wrestlers with more than 40 wins in their career as Danny Pacino will open up the scoring with a three-point takedown and let him up, let Edmund up for one. Danny Pacino early on with the lead. Like you said, lost 10 to five to Josh Edmund last season. Gets the early lead here. Danny Pacino, just like his teammate Lucas Bird, six and zero to start this season, three and zero in duels. Josh Edmund, three and two to start the season and is still winless, 0-2 in his two duels. Very, very interesting. I, I want to go back to that first situation. Danny scored that takedown, and he had Josh scooting on his butt, and he, he got super aggressive looking for back points there, and Josh had been scrambled out of him, and great job by Josh to do that. Little over-aggression by Danny, but I understand it. But back to Edmonds real quick. His two losses in duels come to number one ranked Andrew Alirez, the national champ of two years ago that redshirted last year, and Sam Latona, number 18 in the country, and they were very close matches. So Edmonds' losses are, oh, oh there's that blast double. That was a big takedown for Josh Edmond. Like you said, Edmond has faced two ranked opponents already in duels. Danny Pacino, this is his first ranked opponent he has seen in a duel so far this season. It's interesting how Josh scored on that, that takedown. When I was talking to Coach Poeta this week, this was one of the key matchups that he's seen and he wanted to see, right? And But he said last year, Danny got too high in his stance and Josh Edmond had three blast double takedowns and we've seen it right there. So they scouted him perfectly, but when you have one that strong, that's a Josh, Bur that's a Jordan Burroughs blast double there that we've seen. But you know, down 1.4 to three to Josh Edmond, there's the escape, and there's the tie match at 4 to 4, 50 seconds left here in this first period. Some fireworks early here in this 141 pound match, and we we expected it, right? So so right there, Danny Pacino gets down with one hand on the mat, and that's what Coach Bud is telling him. Hands on the mat, hands on the mat, stay low in your stance to get him, because that double's going to come again before that match is over, Tony. 30 seconds left here in this first period. Danny Pacino and Josh Edmond. Josh Edmond, a two-time NCAA qualifier. 
finished third in the Big 12 last season. Danny Pacino qualified as well last season for the NCAA tournament. His dad, Danny Pacino's dad, Scott, an All-American wrestler at Rhode Island back in his collegiate career. Pacino nice slaps him to the ground, but Edmund right back up, and there's the end of the period. Tied 4-4, four to four, going to 2. Yeah, and one thing we haven't talked about, you know, the 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 two-part single out here, right? The tight shirt and the shorts was something that came on a few years ago, right? And and not many teams have it, but I was surprised to see Missouri come out and not the traditional single in here. So, yeah. yeah. Josh seems to think he's pulling his head gear. You know, he keeps talking. Not sure what, what the situation is here. He did tell his coaches in the corner right by us right when he popped up at the end of the period that there was something going on with his headset now him and Pacino talking they nod heads they're good to go Danny's sporting that mustache this year new look for Danny P it is no shave November Brian <laughs> way to call it Tony I love it I love it there's a good scramble there by Edmund and he gets out he now leads 5-4 to four. he's also in favor of riding time right now only at 21 seconds you see, you see right when Danny came up there, gets right in that low stance. That's what they're that's what they're preaching here. See Mike Pawetta there, Jeremy Hunter, you know. Jeremy Hunter, national champ there from Penn State. They have, see Mike out there with the dancing with Danny. Get your hands low, hands low. It's like a good defense by Edmund there to avoid the shot by Danny Pacino, the high leg shot by Danny Pacino. Now they're on the edge of the circle. And Edmund will scramble out. Edmund now will stand up, touch the head of Danny Pacino, and these two wrestlers sizing each other up now. They started out quick in the first period. This second period has been a little bit slower. A lot of hand fighting here in this second period. One minute remaining here in period number two. Josh Edmund still up five to four in this ranked matchup. Yeah, this first ranked matchup of the night. Wa watch that level change, right? Watch the level change by Josh Edmund. When he touches the mat, comes back up, watch for that explosive shot. You know, right here over under. Danny in good position. I mean, not to score, but they're not going to score. Stalemate, nice call. Big Ten officials on uh, tonight, best in the business. They're getting them up. They want to see action too, just like we do. So far, Tony, Danny's attacking Josh's right leg, right? You know, constant high crotch action. They, they must have seen something there. He leads with it. He keeps re-attacking. Don't see many re-attacks out of Josh. He's waiting for that double leg takedown again. 20 seconds left, man. Here, Get us out of here, Tony. Let's see what we got. 5-4. 15 seconds left. It has been a much slower period number two, as I've mentioned. Josh Edmond just holding on to that 5-4 to four lead after he got that early escape. Danny Pacino tr has taken a few shots, did not get a hold of Edmond's leg at all in those two minutes. So he'll go and take the bottom position for these final two down a point. And Edmund will just try to ride it out. He is in favor of riding time right now, now at 25 seconds of riding time for Joshua Edmund. There but go. Danny Pacino up to his feet, and we're tied again at five. 5-5 five, five here with a minute 48 left. This last period of this match won a lot closer than the match last year when Danny made a good comeback. Danny looks, his gas tank looks good. Now, don't don't forget, Josh been warned for stalling once already. Want him to keep the pace, but stay in a good stance. And Danny has absolutely been more active on the shots. Edmund has really only taken two shots all match. Danny has absolutely gone for more, has not gotten one since the first period. And neither has Edmund for that matter. He got that big blast, two, double legger, as you've mentioned, as these two wrestlers will get back up and head to center mat for these, this final minute and five seconds, tied at five. These two ranked wrestlers in a battle right now. Danny Pacino, another shot, an, another great defense there by Josh Edmond. Yeah. These two wrestlers will let go of each other again. If I'm coaching this last minute here, Tony, I'm telling Danny, stay in good position, wait for that re-attack. And if I'm Coach Smith, I'm telling Josh Edmond, level change, move Danny, get his back to the mat back to the edge of the mat and take that shot and that's exactly what he tried he's in here interesting position josh very strong edmund just gets right back up to his feet as danny pacino actually landed a shot for the first time since the first period nothing to show for it we're still at five 30 seconds left 
Another shot for Danny Pacino. Another great defensive stop by Joshua Edmond. He has been great on the defensive end. Danny Pacino gets a hold of his head, though. 15 seconds. Back up to the feet. And Josh, and Josh Edmond now with the takedown. He takes a late lead. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. He'll just try to hold on. And Josh Edmond played defense. All match, he'll go out of bounds. But with four seconds left, it seems to be... Over. He'll actually give a point to Danny Pacino for stalling, but he still has to get up. Over, under, throw by, right to a double ta leg takedown. Haven't seen that from Josh, but he went to those double, double uh, unders, right to the over, under. And Danny's going to run out of time here. And what a match here in 141. Those two wrestlers will shake hands. They know they just had a great match. That's a decision win for Josh Edmond. His first dual win of the season will give Missouri three points as they'll lead the meet seven to four as we go to another ranked matchup Logan Geoffrey for the Missouri Tigers and for Illinois Cannon Webster the number 10th ranked well you know Logan Geoffrey out of California right so I'm hoping this weather from Clovis California maybe this weather has effect on the on the California kid but Logan Geoffrey very very successful high school wrestler Great, came from Cal Poly, transferred here. These two wrestled last year to a 3-0 match in that duel in St. Louis. Cannon's looking to build on this, but Giaffi, the veteran here, Cannon Webster, the Big Ten Freshman of the Week after winning that journeyman tournament, as you said, one of their champions, Tony. Logan Giaffi, his career record, 40 and 23. He's four and seven in duels this season. He's four and two and one and one. Cannon Webster, Sporting a 26 and one career record, has not lost in a duel so far. Has the red shirt freshman? Yeah, Cannon. You know, Russell last year is 20 and one. His only loss came in the semifinals of the Midlands tournament. You know, and then they decided to red shirt him. You know, great move here. He's ranked top 10 in the country as a as a red shirt freshman. And, and what Cannon's biggest advantage is here: one, he's a big 149 pounder, length, length, length. One of the best defensive wrestlers I've ever seen. And he has a gas tank, Tony. He looks to just build on leads in that second and third period. Geoffrey is a 2024 NCAA tournament qualifier. Like you mentioned, he transferred from Cal Poly back in 2021. In his two duels so far, he has a sudden victory decision win over Benji Alanis of Northern Colorado. And he has lost by major decision by another first ranked wrestler Caleb Henson out of Virginia Tech for Cannon Webster he's got three victories in duels in three duels so far this season at the Wrangle Mania duel he has won by Tech fall 21 to 3 against Yvonne Garcia in five minutes and he also won by decision by Tech fall 21 to 7 against number 14th ranked Jesse Vasquez. Actually, it's major decision, you know, Can Cannon is just such a good tactical wrestler. Right there, a nice little shrug throw by, looking to bring him to the mat. And he does get that takedown. He keeps his left toe in bounds. I thought they were gonna call him out of bounds. He keeps that left toe in. And three points for Cannon Webster in Illinois, trying to bounce back after losing their matchup at 141. Th that's just, Typical Cannon Webster. Great position, great position. Feels him. Great technical wrestler. Scores that first takedown 3 0 there on the nice little throw by. Like you mentioned, Cannon Webster went 20 and 1 last season in his first in his freshman year. 13 of those 20 victories were by major decision or better. As he'll let Geoffrey up for a one-point escape and get a hold of that right ankle, but a good scramble there by Logan Geoffrey to avoid a takedown. He still heads up with Webster, but Webster has that right ankle. He's just gotta grab that second ankle, that's And there great. it is, there's the takedown for Cannon Webster. Will he let him up? He'll just walk him out of bounds, it seems like. He still has a hold, and they'll call him out of bounds now. Six to one in favor of Cannon Webster. They're quick on the stall calls tonight for that home crowd, right? But Cannon Webster's not much of a top wrestler, and not that he can't be. He's just so technical and good on his feet. He loves to wrestle there, Tony. Loves to wrestle there. Webster out of Toulon, Illinois, from Washington Community High School. 
Geoffrey, like you mentioned, out of Clovis, California, from Buchanan High School. He's a redshirt junior. As we mentioned in an earlier match, Josh Edmond from DCC, Detroit Central Catholic, powerhouse in Michigan. Clovis, Buchanan High School, where they have the Doc B, one of the best national tournaments in the country. Clovis, California, Buchanan High School, one of the best schools out west as well. Making his way to Missouri. Listen, Tony, my hands are cold. I'm, I'm hoping Geoffrey's hands are cold too. Well, he was warm <laughs> enough to get an escape there just before getting out of bounds. So now the score sits at six to two as we near the end of this first period in this fourth match. And there it is, we hit zeros for period one. Cannon Webster up six to two. He'll defer. Geoffrey's bench will choose down. And we'll see what Cannon Webster does here. Like you mentioned, not the greatest top wrestler. Now, he, he loves to wrestle on his feet. And one thing you'll notice as this match is the first two takedowns, he used his length, right? Had that little pick, had the you know, little throw by with his length here. Just watch Cannon when he gets in his feet and how well. He's, he's almost six feet tall at 149 pounds, you know? They want him to get that minute of riding time, though, Tony. That's what they're pushing. And after it's a minute, they'll probably have him let him up again. Cannon Webster, you said, from Washington, Illinois. Three-time IHSA High School State champion. Three-time All-State. Fargo champion as well. Looking for that tilt. Riding time for Webster now sitting at 120 and counting. I I'm hearing the coaches, as I said, let him go, let him go. Let him go. They secured that riding time, or at least over a minute. And that's where he wants to be. When he does, they're up on their feet. Six to three now for Cannon Webster. This is where he needs to push the pace. You know, and that's what they're telling him. There's that length, Tony, we talked about. And just an easy shot, like you said, that length really coming into effect there. There's a three-point takedown. He's gonna push him away again. Just push him away. Actually, he'll keep him on the ground, but now he'll push him away. Now with 45 seconds left here in this second period, Cannon Webster up nine to four. And this is where Cannon does his best work in the last three minutes of the match. Credible gas tank, and that's what he is. Tony, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but he loves to be defensive. That guy took a bad shot, and Cannon capitalized on it instantly. He's in a bundle position here. Look, maybe get back points. They're telling him with 20 seconds, stay on top of him, don't let him go. 12-4, 13-4 with riding time. But they're looking for more, Tony. They're looking for more here at the Illinois bench. And so far, this duel has went to how we discussed it earlier. You know, Gage Walker coming out strong, just to recap. You know, and then Lucas Burr dominating. And then a very close match between Pacino and Evan. And then right here, Webster opening up that big lead against Logan Geoffrey. And call it 13 to four in favor of Webster as he has over two minutes of riding time. That's locked up that point for Webster. Webster now looking for that tech fall. Uh, Cannon looking for that defensive takedown here. What I mean by that is a bad shot. There it is. Exactly what we talked about. There's a takedown and a let go by Cannon Webster. He's up 16 to four, one more takedown. And they'll call a point for Geoffrey as we saw Cannon Webster kind of pushed his head and Geoffrey a little shaken up. I'm, I'm a little interested by that, right? No, no, th listen, th there's a problem with this. And what we're not talking about is if Logan Geoffrey cannot continue, he wins the match. That was a misconduct point. So yeah, this is very interesting. This is a very interesting situation here. You know. Thankfully, his head didn't seem to hit anything. And they will uh -oh. bring him over to the corner. Seems like he's just taking a little breather. Thankfully, it looked like he just got a little rattled from that head push it didn't his head didn't make contact with anything thankfully he's good and he's okay he'll walk back towards center map just like the gladiators back in the coliseum just like we talked about earlier you know cannon webster 15 5 he's just gonna let him go so 15 6 he's gonna go to work again with a minute 35 seconds Watch his length here. 
Watch the length, try to score. Joffrey has that right arm around the torso of Cannon Webster. He's trying to hold on to it and they'll take it out of bounds. So they'll stand up. Joffrey, good job there to avoid another takedown. He's got to he's got to survive another minute ten, or else it, it'll be there might be another five points for Illinois. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting here if that one point comes into play. You know, this is where Cannon is so good here, Tony. As we talked about the whole match, and there it is. Webster just sweeps around, get his gets his right arm around the torso, and there's the takedown, and he immediately lets him up and immediately tries to go back. And they'll call it out of bounds. Okay, so Cannon needs one more takedown. One more takedown, and then the riding time, right? So the riding time's locked up, so he needs one more takedown here in 45 seconds and ride him out. Wouldn't be surprised if he goes for it quick, goes down to one knee, does not take the shot yet. Another attempt foiled by Geoffrey. He's There's another shot. He's got that ankle. Can he get around him? That's where Webster excels. 26 seconds here, Joffrey's looking just to hold on. Joffrey has that right ankle of Webster trying to hold on for dear life, trying to avoid that tech fall. He's got a really good grip of that foot there of Cannon Webster. If Cannon Webster can get around. 10 seconds, they'll get Tony. That tech fall. He's yeah, he's right, potentially dangerous. Potentially dangerous, and they'll he knows where they're at stand too. him up. Nine seconds left. So Webster, an ankle away from a tech fall, now nine seconds left. He'll go for a quick shot, come right back up. Five seconds left for Webster. If he wants a tech ball, he'll try, and he won't get it. So he'll get a major decision. Nice match by Cannon Webster. 9, 20 to 7 there. 13 win, and we're all knotted up again. Coming into that pivotal 157 pound match with, with James Conway and Jason Kreiser. Nice win by Cannon Webster. Well, now a one point lead for Illinois as they get two major decisions. Score sits at eight to seven after four. We'll be back on Big Ten Plus for this for, for this fifth matchup. Eli and I, the score sits at seven to eight. The matches sit at two a two two and two. And now we're getting ready to see this fifth matchup. 157, James Conway out of Charleston, Indiana for Missouri. And for Illinois, number 20th ranked Jason Kreiser out of Elliott City, Maryland. Jason Kreiser's well-traveled from Campbell, Iowa State, and now a graduate student here wrestling at 157. And Tony, this is two contrasting styles. Jason is a funky wrestler. He loves to let it fly from all positions. Very hard to coach because he puts himself in danger, but comes out on top generally. Conway here, very stocky, blocky, very technical wrestler. Very technical wrestler. And there it is, just as I talked about. Funky as funky can be. He won't get the pin, but he will get the three-point back points and a three-point takedown, so a quick six points for Jason Kreiser. Conway got that early shot, but Kreiser, like you said, just scrambled right out of it, took it, took Conway right to his back for six. You know, Tony, I know we don't have replay tonight because we're at this Lot 31 Stadium Club, awesome setting, but you you can't teach what Jason did. He got it, got it in a shot, he went to his back first and came out on top. Just a great move here. And Jason's very, very good with, on top, loves to ride the legs, and he's gonna try to put it on Conway. Conway very physical, very blocky physical, and you know, if I'm coaching here for the Missouri Tigers of Smith, I'm telling Conway, no more shots. Let him come to you, right? Well, if you're Conway and you're looking for your first career dual victory, he sits at 0-6. Getting that first shot and then getting taken down in that manner will not be good for the Mentos. He's just sitting there face down in the mat. Jason Kreiser just living right on his back. He loves this position. He's got that leg in and he loves that wing in half. He's got two pins on the year already, and he's looking for more right now. See that leg in there, Dean Tony? He's working that, looking for that power half, looking for that wing. Like you mentioned, Jason Kreiser, transfer from Iowa State in the Big 12. He went five and five last year. For Conway, 
His record sits at 25 and 21, but like I mentioned, still 0 and 6 in his collegiate career in duels. Yeah, you know, 157 so far for for Conway has has been a tough go. His four losses, all four ranked opponents: Vinny Zerbin at Northern Colorado, Joey Blaze, highly ranked out of Purdue, Matt Bianchi out of Little Rock, and Raphael Hippolito, who's just on fire for Virginia Tech. That's Conway's. That's Conway's hit list so far was those guys. And if you see what ha what Conway does against unranked opponents, last season he was wrestling in the Missouri Valley Championship, won the tournament, and all five all five wins were by Tech fall or by pin. Yeah, he's very solid, right? Very solid fundamental wrestler. He was in deep on a shot, and Jason made him pay for it. I'm very interested. See, this match can turn, you know, on a drop of a hat here. Kreiser, the 2022-23 NCAA tournament qualifier with Iowa State, like you mentioned, has two pins on the season, one of them coming in his last duel against Michael Killick of Arizona State. That came in the first period, but 20 seconds left here in this, fir in this first. Kreiser just looking to ride out these last few seconds up six to nothing. Yeah, Jason's four and two on the year, but he's second with the team in team points with those two pins. Yeah. Doing a nice job here dominating Conway, the redshirt sophomore from Charleston, Indiana. There's the whistle for the first period. Conway, an early strike, but Chrysler just scrambled right into a beautiful position, got him six early points and stayed on top for the rest of that first period. He'll take bottom position here to start the second try to get an early another point get up to seven to nothing as funky as jason is on top he's just as funky on bottom he loves to do crazy things he loves to move right up and out right there almost got the reversal there instead of he'll take the one like i mentioned quickly right back to right to seven to nothing his riding time sits at 245 so if he can get to 115 on the clock without being taken down he'll earn another point very interested to see here, you know. Like I said, Jason's the high flyer, right? The high flyer guy, he's got a lead 7-0, he's commanding lead. You know, I know what Coach Poeta's thinking over there. Hey, Jason, wrestle fundamentally sound, nothing crazy, nothing crazy, unless it turns out in your favor. You know, and James Conway here trying to keep this match close or get back into it if Jason tries one of those moves. Chrysler tried to go for that right ankle. They'll call a stall and they'll stand up. One second away for another point for Chrysler. Per riding time, there it is. So Chrysler up eight to nothing, has secured the major decision if it ended here. Jason loves this two on one too. It's a, a little two on one right here. He's controlling it. Likes that, likes that two on one to a little snatch single. Watch him work it here. He's gonna keep pushing. There it is, right there. Conway strong. Big legs, blocky, very strong. But what, when Jason gets in that two-on-one, he does not want to be in this position, Tony. Don't want to be in over-unders. Two-on-one's fine, but no over-unders with Conway. And he'll let him go. There's a shot for Conway, but unable to get a hold of that left thigh of Chrysler. Yeah, that was nice defense by Jason. Came in on a shot, pulled him up in a, you know, an under situation. But I'm telling you, he wants to be in control of this match. Two-on-one's... You don't want to be in double unders or over unders where Conway can hit him with a latch up or a headlock. He wants to stay fundamentally sound here. There's the shot again. Let's see what happens here with Jason. He's looking for that same move. He's got a hold of that left leg. Does Conway. Seven seconds, Tony. Walk us to, through this here. He needs to get his right arm around the torso of Chrysler, or Chrysler has to get that leg out. But the clock hits zeros. Chrysler still up 7 to 0. Conway. Missouri cannot find that elusive takedown. Yeah. Conway, Conway knows he needs to score, right? He needs to score. So Conway goes neutral. He's been in on a couple of nice shots, just had fit, haven't been able to score on Jason here. But Jason's doing a great job. You mentioned the funkiness of Jason Chrysler. That may come from his mom, Carrie, a gymnast at Longwood. Yeah, there you go. Conway in deep on a shot again. This time on the right leg of Chrysler. To end the second, it was on his left leg, but Chrysler gets his leg free. Conway has that arm around the torso, but just lets go. 
and they'll stand up again. 130 left. Conway has to go if he wants to make this a match. Would be a major decision for Jason Chrysler. If it were to end here, he has eight points with his riding time. There's a shot, double leg shot, and a good takedown. Three points for, for James Conway. He'll let him go. He needs to let him go here to keep opening up, right? He's still, so He's still holding him. He needs to let it go if he wants any chance of winning this match because he needs the time to get another one. He'll just hold on to that head of Jason Chrysler. Conway's looking for a little bit of a funk roll here, right? Make stalemate. Okay, 7-3. This is that pivotal match, right? The very pivotal match that we had marked. You know, coming down with the two matches being 2-2. Two to two, This one, he's going to let him up again. He's going to go for it. And they'll, call, three. they'll call the stand-up, so they'll give Jason Chrysler the escape. That actually favors James Conway as he needs another takedown at least to make this a match. 43 seconds left on the clock. He, need, he needs two takedowns with that riding time locked up, as you said earlier. And he's going to look for that double leg takedown. Jason has to be – there it is. There it is. Another t- another double leg. He gets that left arm around, but he can he can he get his torso behind Chrysler? That's been a challenge. Chrysler very strong in his right side. Very strong with that right forearm, as you see, locked Can't. around the elbow of Conway. Good call by the no official. No call a stand up. One thing right there in that position, that wizard position, is do not, do not step over a wizard. That's the key. Do not step over that wizard here. And with 15 seconds. If Jason can get hold on here, you know, there's a chance we can get Jason over here at that intermission. Talk to Jason on his trip to Urbana here, Champagne. You know, four seconds, three seconds. And that will do it. A victory for Jason Chrysler. Now two straight victories for Illinois. Give them... 11 points on the evening they lead 11 to 7 and that'll take us to halftime and we will be back we're going to bring jason over here pretty quick between number 12 illinois and number 13 missouri the score sits at 11 to 7 in favor of illinois we started out with Cage Walker versus Kaylin Riley. Cage Walker came away with the victory to start the night. Then Cade Moore and Lucas Bird. Lucas Bird came away and tied it up at four for Illinois. Then Josh Edmond and Danny Pacino had a great fight. Josh Edmond won that one by one point. Then Logan Geoffrey and Cannon Webster. Cannon Webster came away with the major decision there to give Illinois the lead. And then in the 157, James Conway and Jason Chrysler. Jason Chrysler came away with the victory there and that's where we sit as we get take a look at coach Mike Poeta for Illinois the first time he's coached his team to a 3-0 dual start to start the season as we will get this second half of the meet started with number 15th ranked Cam Steed out of Collinsville Oklahoma he'll be in black and gold and in the orange and blue it'll be Number 24, Braden Scholes out of Kewaskum, Wisconsin, the redshirt freshman. This is a battle of two four former four-time state champions from Wisconsin and Oklahoma. But Steve's been on a roll, one more year of experience. He's 6-0 on the year, and he's been phenomenal so far early on this season. Looking for that early back point here. Both, both of these wrestlers undefeated to start this season. Steed 5-0. And 2-0 and in duels. Braden Scholes 3-0 or 6-0 and in 3-0 and in duels. Something's got to give here at 165. Steed, a sharp push away from the head. And now a single leg takedown on that right leg. He gets around for the three-point takedown. And he will lead 6-1. to one. And he's letting Braden And 6-2. Sco- and he'll go right back to it. Did he let that escape happen? I do not believe the refs called an escape yet for Braden Skull, so the score still sits at six to one. And they'll call potentially dangerous as Steed had his arm right around the neck of Braden Skull. It was almost like a Komoda choke, right? That's what he was calling, and the, and the coach has seen it right away. They must have seen something on film. You know, they've seen it, and that's what he does. But hey, right back up to their feet, Steed, he is feeling very confident in this match. Opened up a 6-3 lead here. And two technical takedowns, just like we've seen from Josh Edmond. 
Blast doubles, blast singles here. You know, looking very good on his feet. Skolnick needs to push the pace a little bit. Well, pushing the pace he does as he'll take two quick shots with one for Steed in the middle there as well. Nothing to show for it for either of these two wrestlers. 125, we're halfway through the first. Uh, first period here in 165. A big shot there by Steed. Can he get around it? He's got his head pinned. And it looks like he'll lose grip of that leg and they'll most likely stand back up as they go out of bounds. 6-3 yeah. here with, you know, we're at a minute six seconds. You know, Steed looking to push the pace. Feels very confident on his feet that he can take Braden Skulls down. Skulls stopped the shot there. Had some good defense. Let's see if he goes right back to it. Steed, the red shirt sophomore. He's 4-0 and in duels in his career. Went 2-0 and last year. Has started 2-0 and this year. In his collegiate career, he is 28-5. and When I talked to Coach Smith this week, Coach Smith was really high on the pro, and, you know, on where he's come so far. Look at, he's looking for a stalling here. And is he going to get it? And he's going to get it. Going to keep, no, no. They did not call it. They just called no. it out of bounds. They'll stand him up. Cam Steed, like I told you, Coach Smith just very high on this youngster and his early start. I mean, he was glowing when we talked about what he's doing and what they expect. And he thinks his wrestler is not ranked high enough. He is ranked number 15th per intermat. Braden Skulls 24th. Yeah, Skulls started the season, you know, unranked. Like, in like, and if he had to have a ranking, he was like 50 or 60. So he come out 6-0 and he's just climbed the rankings. He's done a great job. He's, he's had a nice pin, some bonus points. And, but now, Steed, and now Steed gets called for the stall. Steed has two falls in, in 40 seconds and 29 seconds and a tech fall in 644. And that's what they're telling him right here. They're telling him to push the pace, push the pace. That'll take us to the end of this first period. Scores at 6-3 to three in favor of Cam Steed. He'll take bottom. I'm interested, to see, I'm interested to see Steed here. If Braden can stop his first move, you know, he might be able to ride him for a little bit. Skulls is very good on top, right? He's trailing right now, but he's looking to take some of that riding time off. And this is where he needs to go. He needs to keep Steed's head on the mat, see what he can do riding him. Tire him out, wear him out, so then that third period maybe open up a little bit. You saw Skulls try to chop that arm of Steed. He stayed firm and now gets to his feet but he'll get brought right back down by Braden Scholes. Big, big bring back down to the mat by Scholes. Scholes? Won't count for any points. Oh, he's, he's, he's got, won't count for he's got that leg. Now he's, he's got looking. that leg. He's trying to find some back points. Will he get that shoulder? He will he find that us. shoulder blade? He, Cam Steed oh. will get back, and now the referee will blow the whistle as Cam Steed is hurt. He's holding that left knee. So Braden Scholes was in a Turk position. I told you when we started the second period, I wanted to see what this played out. Because Skulls is nasty on top. Very, very aggressive, nasty on top. He had, it, he had him in a turp position, almost had bad points. What I was about to say is he needed to reach his left hand towards us and try to extend his body. It seems like when he did that, Steed might have hyperextended his knee here or his hip. Skulls did have a hold of that left knee of Steed. Steed very clearly in pain. But a good job by Steed to avoid those back points as he was clearly in a very uncomfortable position. Yeah. He's still unable to get up. He's got he's got two minutes here, Tony. You can see the clock. It's down to under a minute. He's got two minutes of injury timeout, and then they have to make a decision if he's going to continue to wrestle. At first, I thought maybe it was... You know, it wasn't as serious as it looked, and he maybe just twinged something here, but Cam C clearly in pain. You know, the trainer went to grab his knee, and they, they couldn't get him up. Does, he's got 40 seconds here to make a decision. Well, he's got that knee brace on that right knee. Uh, it's on his left knee, and you saw his coach just touched his leg, and he instantly reacted to so, it. So there's an interesting situation here. So you've seen Coach Smith throw the challenge brick, right? What he's basically saying is that if this was a – illegal position or illegal move then Missouri would win the match not Illinois
as you can see, the brick there, as I said, they're going to challenge. He went over to ref. They're going to challenge and see if he, see if it was a potentially dangerous move or an illegal move in what he did. Looks like he's going to wrestle. Oh, they're going to review this. And, and this is very strategic, right? So let me walk you through this. If they decide that this was a, a legal move, potentially Missouri wins the match and Braden Scholes gets disqualified because Steve can, can't continue. If he doesn't, they're also giving him an extra time to rest and see what he can do here. So it'll as be very see, interesting. As you see, now the officials checking the replay. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we do not have replay for us. So we are just as in the dark as you all are. Let's get let's get you guys caught up. We sit 11 to 7. The score, if Cam Steed can keep wrestling, will sit in his favor at 6 to 3. He, he's going to keep wrestling here. He, he, he's walking around up there. He's going to keep wrestling. I, I give Coach Smith a ton of credit for here. He gets he gets one challenge brick, right? Gets a challenge. He's looking at it, making sure. But what he's doing here is also giving Cam extra time to rest and recover. You know, so. Cam Steed is up and about, but he is limping quite a bit. As you see him not wanting to put that much weight on that left leg. It, it's going, it, what's going to happen here too is, let's see, this is interesting. Okay, so nothing still say 6-3, Cam's going to go down. Uh, now, now in this situation, because he went out on injury time, Braden Scholes gets his choice. So he's going to go down and get that point. It's his choice. As you know, he was on top. To start the demand, now is this is a, a free point here is what he's thinking, right? So mm -hmm. we said six to three here in the second period, 120 left to go here in period number two. Steed back at it. But like you said, Braden Scholes will succeed in getting that free escape point, but Steed, that leg not affecting him a quick three point takedown. Oh, right he's got a cradle mat, locked in. And now he's got a cradle trying to get it trying to get Scholes to his back, but Scholes with the reversal. Now nine to six, he'll let Steed up. What, what I said, so told we'll you, when this duel started, at ten to six, in I told favor this, of Cam Steed. When this duel started, this might be the most high-scoring match of the of the meet, and so far it's living up to that potential. Skulls pushing the pace, and he is hurt. He, Cam Steed, did just he doesn't fall have backward. any injury time. He does not have any injury time. That was untouched by Cam Steed. Skulls did nothing. And Cam Steed just fell backward, and the officials it, the match is over. are calling the match. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steed unable to sit down, he stand up. He had a brilliant two-leg takedown it. after uh, the injuries. It, that's it. Uh, what are they saying here? Will they that's allow it. him to keep wrestling? So match is Steed over. Steed wants to keep going. Can he? His but he doesn't time have ran any out. more injury time, and they will shake hands. And this is six-point victory for Braden Scholes. And will raise Braden Scholes' hand, and that's six points, like you mentioned, for Illinois and Cam Steed very upset about that result as he wanted to keep going and he'll take a seat right next to us clearly in pain. Well, this is a match, Tony. Hey, that big big six-point turnaround here for Braden Scholes. It was, it was a high-flying match. I mean, Cam came out, you know, after they got hurt and went right to that double. Blast, he looked good. You know, laying right behind us here, but that turns the tide in Illinois' favor big time. And just in just in time for the man of the match, <laughs> Keegan O'Toole, set to wrestle, coming up right now, the number one ranked wrestler at 174 in the country. He'll take on number 16, Danny Bronigal, but more on Keegan O'Toole. He's from Heartland, Wisconsin, wrestled at Arrowhead High School. He's a senior. His record in college sits at a staggering 93 and 4 on his career. Two of those coming in the NCAA tournament. His dual record sits at 43 and 1. And Brian Keegan O'Toole, the two time national champion, coming up to wrestle right here in Champaign. Yeah. Keegan O'Toole, every accolade you can possibly imagine in college wrestling. The, his club coach and high school coach essentially was Ben Askren, the two-time national champ from Missouri. Max Askren, the one-time national champ from Missouri. 
Tegan O'Toole, two-time national champ, looking to be only the second three-time national champ in Missouri, Jaden Cox. Well, Danny Bronigo will get the first shot, successful shot of the match. He does not get the takedown yet, but he does have a good, strong hold of that left leg, and there's the takedown for Danny Bronigo, and you can hear the Illinois crowd gets louder for that takedown than any other takedown so far tonight. They know who he's wrestling, potentially the best wrestler pound for pound in the country. Sits at number three on Flow Wrestling, but Danny Bronigal out to the early three to one lead as he lets O'Toole up for the for the escape, but he goes right back trying to find that left leg. Not Danny, not phased by Keegan O'Toole. They wrestled before the match was close, and Keegan ended up in the third period, finally pinning Danny. And I'll tell you this about Keegan O'Toole: Keegan O'Toole is up a weight class this year, so is Danny, but Keegan O'Toole is one of the best cradlers in the country. And he loves to hit a suicide cradle. He loves to hit cradles from all positions. So it'll be interesting to see if Danny goes down and how it goes in. But, you know, I'm just saying, watch Keegan with his cradles. 3-1 lead and not a position that he's used to be in trailing in a match. For Danny, it, for Danny Bronigo, it's been a little bit of a slow start in his eyes. The Olympic red shirt from last season has started this season 3-3, three and 2-1 three, and one in duels. Of course, Keegan Toole, 6-0 and and 2-0 and in duels to start his season. Now, Ke Keegan O'Toole. There's a shot attempt by Keegan O'Toole. He gets that right ankle, but Bronigal gets that left ankle, and now they're, in a, now they're in a very peculiar position, both with one ankle of each. And this, seems, this very much feels like a stalemate position for this these two. And we'll see if the officials will call it, but it doesn't seem to be much moving. There it is. They'll stand him up. Danny putting up the early fight here, man. This is a great to see. Not backing down, you know, from the higher rank wrestler, one of the best wrestlers in the country. It, it was funny. You know, we talk about Keegan O'Toole, the tool man. More, more accolades in wrestling than a carpenter in his tool belt, right? The tool man, Keegan four, O'Toole. Four-time All-American. He's podiumed all four, four years of his collegiate career, two first place and two bronze medals. He's won the Big 12 twice, and he's said in his bio that his goal is to become a world champion and Olympian. But now, you see, he's trying to find that cradle, but Bronigal has that left ankle trying to hold on desperately, but now, Keegan O'Toole bringing Bronigal right over and kind of cartwheels, and now Bronigal to his back, and he gets back to his chest, but a three-point takedown. And the lead for Keegan O'Toole is we hit zeros here in this Right period. before the buzzer. These big men at 174 pounds, the flexibility is crazy, right? Those two scrambles, that was just amazing. And these two wrestlers, big for 174. <laughs> yeah. Hey, big bruisers, you know. Like I said, we, kept, we keep saying the Coliseum, you know. The, the dinner and the fight here. Danny Bronigo, the ultimate warrior, right? All tattooed up here. Loves to wrestle. The banger, the grappler against Mr. Technician here, the tool man, Keegan O'Toole. Tool chooses to start down and he'll get that escape quickly. He now leads five to three early on in the second period. Bronigal has been aggressive as he looks for another shot attempt there, but unable to grab it. He'll get it there as he will try to get around that's good defense there. You see that left arm of Keegan O'Toole stopping Danny Bronigal from getting around. And once again, these two wrestlers in a peculiar position. But Danny Bronigal trying to bring Keegan O'Toole to his back. He's got both legs. This is what Ben Askren made famous, this funky scrambling. And I'm telling you right now, Danny had Keegan on his butt. And any other wrestler in the country, that's a takedown. And Keegan O'Toole scrambled out of it. And now he's trying to get the upper hand, looking for that far leg. He's just so flexible here. And but there, he gets it. And there it is. Danny Bronico fought for that takedown. He will achieve it. And just like his first one, the Illinois cloud erupts. And this time, will he let Keegan O'Toole up? He does. So this score sits deadlocked at 6-6. Six to six, Less than a minute to go in the second period. What a great start here for Danny Bronigal. Got the home. Oh, nice shot by Keegan. Really good shot by Keegan and a quick takedown there in response. 30 seconds left to go here in period number two for these two wrestlers. A top 16 matchup going on. 
And you, Very close here, nine to six so far. Just over 15 seconds left. You know, I'm, I'm really glad to see Danny come out like this with all this fire because, you know, three-time national qualifiers had a disappointing start to his season going three and three and then wrestling the number one wrestler in the country, Keegan O'Toole, right? But come out, take the lead, score another takedown. This is exactly what Coach Poeta wants to see out of Danny Bronigo. And it will be Danny's choice. He'll stay down. He'll try to get an escape. He's three points down on the number one, number one ranked 174 wrestler in the country, Keegan O'Toole. If he can escape now, it'll only be a two point match. Riding time, not a factor for either of these two wrestlers. This, this is where, you know, the All-American, the national champ, the, the veteran leadership comes into play. But Bronigal's a six year wrestler here. You know what I mean? He took an Olympic red shirt last year. But this is interesting. This is where the cradle can come into effect. He's such a long wrestler. Watch him go over the top of Danny's far shoulder or head looking for that cradle. And you just see that those very muscular arms by Danny Bronigal just instantly gets that strong four-step base. Keegan O'Toole just kind of holding on to that left side of Danny Bronicle, trying to keep him down to the ground. Bronicle gets down to his knee and tries to get up now, now up to his feet, right back down. Uh, now O'Toole. 133, riding factor, now, riding time now up over 30 seconds for O'Toole. He's looking to secure that riding time, and then once he does, he might let him up, try to look for a bigger lead or look for some back points with, you know, suicide cradle, something like that. He, he loves being in those positions, but just a solid wrestler. And, you know, the thing to talk about, too, is Danny Kamal jumped out, home crowd, had a big lead, you know, small lead, I should say, I apologize, but two takedowns, but Keegan O'Toole never flustered, stayed right in the match, scored that takedown just like that. And there's the riding time for Keegan O'Toole. Score now sits at 10 to 6, one minute remaining here in this match. Danny Barnacle needs to go if he has any chance of beating this number one ranked. There's the escape, he gets it. He, they will call him the escape. They'll stand up in the middle of the mat. 52 seconds to go. Three point game if you count riding time. Yeah, and I mean, a takedown here, he can erase the riding time and essentially be tied, right? And that's what they're telling him. Stay aggressive. Nothing to lose here for Danny Bronigo. The number 16th ranked wrestler in this match right now with his number one ranked counterpart. They're hand fighting right now, 40 seconds left. Shot attempt by Bronigo, unsuccessful. O'Toole just content with slowing this match down now. He wants to secure those points for his team. He knows how to do that in almost every one of his matches in his collegiate career, but he's being put to the test here by Danny Bronicle. Bronicle still hand fighting. There's a shot attempt and another shot attempt now by Keegan O'Toole. He gets a hold of that 20 thigh. seconds looking for he that goal away. behind. Now Danny Bronicle trying to get around. He gets that side, brings him down to the ground, but now Keegan O'Toole gets it back. And he'll secure the victory Looking for, the for more Tigers. He'll try to get the pin. It won't happen. We'll hit zeros. You get three Keegan back O'Toole. points. He does get three back points. That'll secure the major. the major decision for Keegan O'Toole and the Missouri Tigers. But what a fight Danny Bronico put up against potentially the best pound for pound fighter in the, in the world. Hey, look, Keegan O'Toole is just so fun. My son. I'm so glad to see the fire that Danny came out with, right? You know, Keegan stayed confident didn't get phased Danny Bronigle just took it to him it was a very good match but the tool man comes out on top but we have a surprise for you in this next match yeah, Edmund well, Ruth was supposed to wrestle Colton Hawks the big 12 wrestler of the week and now it's gonna be the freshman Logan Cole and we'll get right back to that after a two-minute break we'll be right back on Big Ten Plus You can catch most of those on Big Ten Network or Big Ten Plus as we get back to action here at Lot 31 Stadium Club Tent here in Champaign, Illinois. The first time we are ever in this venue. It has been beautiful here as we are now into the 184 matchup between the true freshman for Missouri, Logan Cole, making his first, making his collegiate duel first appearance and his matchup the number ninth ranked Edmund Ruth who was just a Big Ten champion last season an All-American and a first team all Big Ten yeah and, and Edmund Edmund's off to a slow a slow start this year so they're looking to get him on track Logan Cole 
a late scratch by Colton Hawks. Colton Hawks was the Big 12 wrestler of the week, undefeated. That was the match we were looking forward to, and Colton Hawks didn't weigh in today, so we get the freshman from Wyoming, 2024 Montana State champion, three-time Montana State place winner, placed third at the 2002 preseason nationals, and getting his first test on the big stage in the venue against Edmund Ruth. Well, he's definitely accustomed to tests as Logan Cole last year, perfect 36 on his ACT. So he's got the, he's got the brains <laughs> and the brawn. We'll see if he'll have enough brawn to get past Edmund Ruth. Edmund Ruth out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, attended Susquehanna Township High School. Like you said, off to a bit of a slow start is Edmund Ruth. He's known for those very aggressive takedowns and just adding up points. This year he's just been content in standing up and getting through these matches as we see a little bit of the same here early on. Yeah, he, he's been, talk to Coach Poeta and the whole message was, hey, it's time to open up, it's time to score. It's not, it's not a, about survival. You're the better wrestler. You need to go out and attack it. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen attack here in the first two minutes, right? And, and But I did talk to Coach, he loves those double unders here, Tony. Well, there it is. There's some aggressiveness out of Edmund Ruth. And there's the takedown. He gets it and he lets it go. Immediately, they're still in bounds. They waved it off. They waved it off. He waved off the takedown. They actually waved off the takedown, so it is still 0-0. Zero, zero, but very close for an early lead for Edmund Ruth. That's the aggressiveness you've been looking for. Yeah, and, and he loves those double unders, right? And he gets right to it, but he needs to get to it more often. But I did talk to Coach Bud about it. He said, you know what? Edmund's off to a slow start. He, he called it disappointing, but he also said, you know, last year there was a ton of pressure on Edmund. He went into the Big Ten tournament 26 and one, you know, and so now that he's got that off his back, go out there, wrestle loose, see what we can do, and he's got the freshman here, 0-0, zero, zero, with five seconds to go in the first period, Tony. Three, two, one. The true freshman, Cole, will finish tied at 0-0 zero, zero with the number ninth ranked 184 wrestler in the country. Logan Cole has started three and two in his collegiate career. Placed fifth at the Tiger Style Invitational. He wrestled at 174 in that tournament as Ruth will just let him go. And Cole now with the lead early on in the second period. Yeah, one nothing. I mean, you mentioned, you know, Edmund Ruth, Big Ten champion. He was the first Big Ten champion, you know, besides his coach sitting over there in the corner right now, Isaiah Martinez, in 2018 at 165. So yeah. Edmund Ruth needs to get offense going here and open up a little bit. Ruth, his career record sits at 68 and 14 in duels. He's 25 and five. He's a Big Ten champion last year. He was an All-American, as we mentioned. He's qualified for the NCAA tournament two times in his career. His brother Edward, a three-time NCAA champion at Penn State as well. So his family just full of wrestlers. As he'll take a big shot for that right leg. He'll get a hold of it, bring it out to the leg. We'll see if there's a big takedown here. Left One minute left in the second period. See if Edmund can finish here. He's got to pull that out. He's in, a good, he's in good position right now, Tony. And there it is. There's the three-point takedown. He got to take it away in the first period. He gets it clean here in the second. A three-to-one lead for Edmund Ruth. 40 seconds to go. It would be interesting to see here if they try to have Edmund ride him out. I think he just said he wants to ride him out and then go to work in the third period. That's another one of Edmund's strengths is securing that riding time. He's very good at just racking up the points. But like we've mentioned, have not seen that as much this season. He did have an 11-7 decision win over Azizbek Faizulayev of Arizona State in his last duel. So, we'll, so there's double digit points for him there. But in his in his first Wranglemania duel against Will Ebert of Binghamton lost zero to two. To an unranked wrestler, right? So I mean like, you know, Edmund just needs to pull the trigger and, and, and coach said, hey, when Edmund shoots, he scores. When Edmund gets aggressive, thing, good things happen. And that's the thing we want to see. Edmund's definitely going to go down here, right? He 
does see co his coach Poeta point towards the mat. He'll get down. The three to two lead for the number ninth in the country, ranked in the country, Edmund Ruth, over the unranked true freshman Logan Cole, ma Logan Cole making his dual debut. Ruth trying for a reversal there. Cole holds firm. Cole doing a great job against Edmund Ruth. Doing a fantastic job keeping this match three to two, you know. And now Cole just letting that riding time dissipate. Back under 10 seconds of riding time for Ruth. 135 on the clock for these two wrestlers. One point lead for Edmund Ruth. He is flat on his stomach on the mat. He needs a new start, Tony. He needs a new start as Logan Cole is in control of this match and unfazed in this atmosphere and by this former All-American and highly ranked opponent. Logan Cole showing some moxie here as a freshman. Well, what a, what a matchup to be thrown into for your first ever collegiate duel. Have fun, the Big Ten champion, Edmund Ruth. But like you said, Logan Cole putting up a great fight trying to get that riding time he will get enough if he can hold on to this riding time to tie this match tie up. it up right tie it up to your point right it's at 40 seconds he needs to hold on for another 20 seconds on top and he will tie this matchup up but there it is an escape for Edmund Ruth and that will all but secure his victory if he can stay on his feet 38 seconds for Cole to get a takedown and potentially the upset 32 seconds here, and the Logan Cole is within striking distance of Edmund Ruth. And his coaching yeah. staff telling him he's got to go, he's got to go. He does. He's only two points down. A takedown will get him the victory. He's got 27 seconds to do it, but Edmund Ruth is holding on to the leg. There's the shot attempt, but Edmund Ruth with the reverse and gets the three-point takedown. Nice defensive takedown there by Edmund. That's just what he needed. He's going to let him go, maybe get another one here. But, you know, that's what Edmund does so well, you know. Third period. And there's another three for Edmund Ruth right at one second. 10-3, doesn't and get the major. So he doesn't get the major decision. But he's going to increase nice, that team score. A nice victory for Edmund Ruth. Started out a little bit slow. But he'll pick up three more points for his team. And the, the freshman, another talented freshman, one of the best in the country last year as a senior in high school. Another Askren wrestler, Aiden Sinclair. Aiden Sinclair, yet another true freshman. He's out of Edgerton, Wisconsin from Milton High School. And he'll face the number 10th ranked wrestler at 197, Danny's twin brother, Zach Bronigal. And, and I can promise you, right? And I know Zach's the Wiley veteran here. Six-year wrestler, had that Olympic redshirt last year. But this freshman, Aiden Sinclair, is not phased by any of it. He's not phased by it. He's not phased of the big stage. And he's going to be a name to reckon with over the next four and a half years of his college career. Well, his high school accolades tell the story themselves for Aiden Sinclair, the number one ranked 190 wrestler by Flow Wrestling and Matt Stout. No points yet as... This match gets off to a fast start. Like I was saying, Aiden Sinclair, he's a three-time Wisconsin State champion. He wrestled for the U-17 Team USA. And as an upperclassman in his junior and se senior year in high school at Milton High School, Aiden Sinclair went a perfect 82-0. and 0. And like you said, trained with Ben Askren. He is very, very technical wrestler, and he moves extremely well for 197. Not the tallest 197 pounder. Very two similar body styles here. Loves to counter wrestle. There's a shot attempt for Zach and a quick takedown for Bronigal. He'll get three points on the true freshman. Bronigal, Bronigal, the Bronigal brothers out of Belleville, Illinois from Altoff Catholic High School. Bronigal, Zach Bronigal, 75 and 37 in his career in duels. He's 31 and 18. To start this season, he's five and one and three and zero oh in duels. Sinclair, in his career and in this season, he started out his career one and one in duels and one and one so far. Did not wrestle in the Tiger Style Classic. Zach Bronigal's is one loss in dual meets, and then he lost 
in the, in the exhibition at the All-Star Classic to two ranked opponents by one point. The seventh and eighth rated wrestler, Beard and Little from Little Rock, Beard from Lehigh, lost him by one point. And, and Zach just like, both these guys like to stand in the middle and they like to bang. They like to sit there, throw hands, club, very, very physical. One thing about Aiden Sinclair, he has a great throw by. He has a great shrug throw by. Just pay attention here who's in this over under. That's what he's looking for right there. There, there it, is. it is. Just like you said, Brian, there's the shrug. But Zach Bronico, great defense and brings it right to three points for himself. What a nice counter re What we call that is a re attack. And what I call that is a veteran takedown. You know, this, the senior leadership there. Awesome throw by right to a single. And Zach countered immediately. You know, great takedown, great re attack. And he's up six to one with just under a minute to go. Early 6-1 to one lead for Zach Bronigal. And now with over a minute of riding time, he'll just keep riding him out, it seems like. He'll stay in bounds. Now 30 seconds left here in the first. They'll stand up. You know, you know, Aiden Sinclair, as you said, undefeated in his last two years of high school, comes out here in his first big duel, right, and grabs Zach Bronigal. A, a, a six-year senior here, you know, and I see, keep saying six-year. Zach Olympic redshirt and redshirt, right? It's only four years of wrestling, but he took an Olympic redshirt, tried to make the uh, Greco team, you know, had a great showing on the world stage and got that, got all that experience and comes back here as a senior, as a three-time national qualifier, looking to be an All-American in his last year here at Illinois. Sinclair did pick up that escape, so the score sits at six to two now. They'll go out of bounds now. Three seconds left in the first period, and now Sinclair gets called for the stall. And now we'll hit zeros for this first period. Six to two in favor of Zach Bonnegan. Six two, and a win here, Tony. A win here will secure the duel for Illinois. See if Zach can get up and out. And I heard the Missouri coaches bench signaled to Sinclair that Bronigal is getting tired, although no sign there is a three second, it seemed like, escape for Zach Bronigal from bottom position. Now sits at, now the score sits at seven to two in favor of the Bronigal twin. We're sitting with an earshot of the Missouri bench, right? So we're getting a lot of that. Um, Zach Bronigal might look tired, but he's not tired, okay? He just went over 10 minutes with Stephen Little in the end, the wrestling classic, the all-star classic, and he he's sweaty. He might look like he's lethargic, but he I'm telling you, what a gas tank on this 197 pounder. There's a shot attempt for Bronigal, but it backfires as they are running into the camera well. Our camera operator, Riley Tucker, gives me a smile. They're okay. And they'll stand up, and now Zach Bronigal gets called for the stall. Well, it was either stalling or they were gonna they were gonna review it and look for three. But Missouri doesn't have another challenge brick here to throw. That was a reattack by Aiden C. Clear, just like Zach Bronigal hit on Aiden earlier that we seen right in front of us on the mat. Well, the freshman learning from the red shirt senior. Now another shot attempt for Bronigal lands on his side, but gets up in time. Yeah, both of the so far in this match, all the attacks have come on re-attacks, right? Or I shouldn't say all the attacks. All of the scoring has come on re-attacks or close scoring on re-attack positions. So watch that when he takes a half shot and the other guy comes after him. That's what these guys are looking at. And they move so quick for 197 pounders. There's that throw by that we talked about. And this one's successful for Aiden Sinclair. Now he gets the leg swipe and the takedown for the true freshman. He loves that shrug throw by. He loves it. 16 seconds, and Zach gets away. Zach will get the escape. Aiden Sinclair a little slow to get up. Yeah, it looks like he got hit in the nose there. Got a little, got a little heel to the nose and they'll as just, Zach was kicking out. And they'll just let the clock hit zeros. His lips bleeding. He's got some blood going. Looks yeah. like it's his nose, but it looks like he's fine. He'll just get it wiped up real quickly. Yeah, 8-5, man. This is a great match. Great match here, and, and Aiden Sinclair is going to go down here in the third period. And, and if he gets out, if he gets out, it'll be 8-6 and a takedown, a takedown match here with two minutes to go with Zach Bronigal. 
the number 10th ranked Zach Gronigal against the freshman Aiden Sinclair. And I'm telling you, this Missouri team is young. We've seen freshman Gage Walker. We've seen freshman Aiden Sinclair. And then Logan Cole, surprisingly, in the lineup. This is a young team with highly ranked kids, and they're going to be a force to reckon with. They're without their 118, uh, 125-pounder Noah Certain, and they're out with their All-American Elam at 197. They're looking to get those two back by the Big 12 schedule. Well, here in the 197 matchup, Aiden Sinclair holding his own against the number 10th ranked 197 wrestler in the country, Zach Bronicle. The score's at 6-8 to eight now, make it 8-6. to six. And both wrestlers have been warned for stalling, as you heard the Missouri bench yell stalling. So 8-6, riding time right now with a minute 28. But if Sinclair gets a takedown, he can erase some of that riding time. Plenty of time here to go. Minute 36 seconds, and this is a very, very important match for Illinois. This could secure the duel with the victory. With an Aiden Sinclair upset, they're still within striking distance. Bronigal does have the riding time advantage at 128, so the score does sit at 9 to 6 in favor of the red shirt senior Zach Bronigal. Oh, he's in on an but ankle. There Tony. we go. There's a shot by Sinclair. He's successful in getting that left ankle of Bronigal. Can he get that arm around the torso? He is still holding on. Now he gets on top, and there's three points for Aiden Sinclair. He needs to take 26 seconds off the clock. And he'll oh, just, he just let, let him, up. him go. So instead, the score will stay tied at 9 to 9. Bronigal still has 21 seconds of riding time to spare. 40 seconds. Oh, and he's. He, this. Can he hold on to that leg? He's looking that for that is, belly whizzer. That is very deep for Zach Bronigal. Zach's he's got in that, trouble well, here. Zach is in trouble, but he's got that leg oh. in deep. So as long as he can hold on, they may he's, go. he's looking for a cradle here, Tony. This is not a good position. Oh, and there it is. He got that ankle free, did Sinclair, and he gets three points. Now the lead, 12 to 10, 15 seconds. Bronigal's got to make something happen. Sinclair will just let, hold on to him. Now gets him to his back. The true freshman getting some back points on Zach Bronigal. What an end to this matchup. Four points of back points for Aiden Sinclair. And that keeps Missouri in this matchup. They needed that victory. Puts him within striking distance going into this heavyweight match. A huge upset. As we said, this stage was not too big the for final, Aiden Sinclair. The final score, 6-10 to ten for Aiden Sinclair. He'll pick up three points for the Tigers. So now it all comes down to Seth Nitzel, who needs a six point. Welcome back here to Big Ten Plus. Tony Fanara and Brian Swa here to bring you this final matchup here from Stadium Club here at Lot 31 in Champaign, Illinois. It's up to Seth Nitzel to get a pin on Luke Luffman to keep Missouri in this match. They're down six points, 20 to 14 in favor of the Illini. It's a ranked matchup to end this, to end this meet. Luffman, Nitzel, 2014. You know, crazy, crazy end to this. Huge upset by Aiden Sinclair to give them a chance. And then Seth Nitzel with the tall task on the road. But you got two big competitors here. And two very, very big heavyweights, right? And Seth Nitzel is just built. He looks perfect for this Coliseum atmosphere. Seth Nitzel does look just like a 285 wrestler with absolutely zero body fat it is just all muscle but luke luffman definitely has the muscle to compete as nitzel gets a quick strike on that right ankle luffman able to escape a, a quick little re-attack luke kind of stuttered and then you know stopped a little bit and nitzel came right in on that re-attack very quick let me talk let's talk about seth nitzel here the redshirt junior from stillwater stillwell kansas he was started off the season 3-0. He lost his last two matches with two ranked opponents, Seth Nevels of Maryland, 15-2, 5-2, uh, in sudden victory one, and Jimmy Mullins, 4-2. to two. 
So his two losses are ranked opponents. Very, very close here. Big matchup. Couldn't have it any other way, Tony. Great venue. Looks fantastic. And we're going to end it on the last duel. You know, Missouri here. There's a couple things that turn the match, right? And, and we'll kind of lead into it. But, but Cam Steed, you know, that match. And now the Aiden Sinclair one. And now we're right here with Seth Nitzel. And on the other side for Luke Luffman, his Wranglemania results could not have been any better for him. Won by major decision, 11 to one over 16th ranked Corey Day out of Binghamton. And then against number four ranked Colton Schultz of Arizona State, came out with the victory two to one in sudden victory. Yeah, sudden victory on a stall call. But I mean, that was a huge win, a signature win in Luke Luffman's career. And that's why he came back for this last season, Tony. He wants to get on that podium, wants to be an All-American, senior leadership. Coach Potter has that ace in the hole at heavyweight. And Luke Luffin looking to seal the deal here against Seth Nitzel. Well, two minutes are quickly gone here in this first period. Nothing to show for it points-wise for either of these two wrestlers. Seth Nitzel needs a pin in order to keep his Missouri Tigers in this match. That would tie the score up at 20. 20-20, and then we'll go to bonus points. And, I, and the, uh, why I mentioned the Cam Steed match is because that match ended with a six-point default. So... Illinois still in the lead if it, if it ends. I think the two majors there between Lucas Bird and Cannon Webster will be the difference. But Missouri Tigers putting up a fight here. And you feel like they're in a good place after the win with Aiden Sinclair. Aiden Sinclair definitely the match of the night for the Tigers. Came back from down against number 10th ranked Zach Bronigold to get the victory late in the third period. There's a shot attempt. 10 seconds, Tony. Luffman. 10 seconds to get him down. There's the big leg sweep and the takedown for Luke Lovett and a reversal for two points right quickly for Seth Nitzel gets him right back some quick action with five seconds in the first in the first period well for three minutes or for two minutes and 55 seconds zero points on the clock all of a sudden three points for Luke Luff and two points for Seth Nitzel yeah and, and coach Smith jumps right out of his chair right Tony, you're watching the action. I'm over here watching Coach Smith. He's looking for a brick he doesn't have. He didn't think it was a takedown. He thought his wrestler got the takedown. Should have been a takedown and a reversal. Should have just been a takedown. Well, now after an escape from Luffman, it'll, the score will sit at 4-2. to two. So like you said, no more challenge for Coach Smith. He used it for that Cam Steed injury. Yes. And that yes. came up unsuccessful. So he lost it. Would have been very helpful in that situation. Like you said, I think Seth Nitzel came away with that with that takedown instead of two-point reversal. Yeah, that's what it looked like. You know, it was tough to see. Trying to watch it on the screen right in front of us. Great venue. A little bit of blocked here on the right side with the great camera work here by our big guy up here on top. But just fantastic. And four to two. And not surprising we're ending the duel this way. Now Tony, every time we're together, it comes down to the last match. And I'm loving it tonight. It really does seem so, Brian. We've got a very good matchup here to finish it off. Both of these teams in this meet. Seth Nitzel was, about, was taken down with five seconds left in the first period. And then with right as he hit the mat, was able to reverse it back for two points in favor for the Missouri Tigers. The scores now sits at four to two for these two wrestlers. 50 seconds left. In the second period, Luke Luffman happy to just do some hand fighting here. There has not been any riding time for either of these two wrestlers, so no factor there. Now 35 seconds. This is very similar to how this first period went. Lots of hand fighting throughout the throughout the period, and then the action struck late. Well, the Illini bench over there, all the wrestlers are sitting right mad side. They're trying to cheer Luke on. Like you said, we've seen the action last five seconds. Nitzel will have his choice in the third period, so he's going to go down, you know, with the hope to escape and make it a 4-3 match. But here it is, Tony, 10 seconds. Walk us through these last 10 seconds and see if we get the action going again. We'll see if it happens. Luffman tried for that leg swipe again, was unsuccessful. Now five seconds left. This one seems to be hitting zeros without any action. So a uh, less eventful end to this second period. The score sits at 4-2. to two and Missouri will choose down. Two minutes, Tony, on this incredible evening. Nitzel, 
Mitzel needs a reversal and a pin or an escape, a takedown and a pin. He scrambles out of it, now he's on his butt. He's looking for a switch here, Tony. He's actually not in bad position. He needs that right arm across the oh, torso, look. but look at that left arm for Luckman now around the head and he gets right back around. And the situation is looking more and more dire for Seth Nitzel. Luffman, Luffman has a hold of that left wrist. He lets him up. Nitzel goes right for that takedown. He needs to if he wants any chance of keeping his Missouri Tigers in this match. Luffman just trying to keep these two wrestlers on their feet. He's holding him up by the shoulders. You see his arms underneath. Double unders here. This is the Edmund Ruth. See if he can hit the throw by. Oh, he just ran out of space. Ran out of real estate. And that was the signature Edmund Ruth double under throw by, like you mentioned. One minute and 12 seconds away from Illinois beating their second ranked opponent here early on in the season. And starting the season four and zero oh in duels. Missouri on the brink of starting one and two in their duels. Luffman just needs to survive another 55 seconds on his feet. And he will be successful in securing this Illini victory. But Seth Nitzel still a takedown and a pin away from his Missouri Tigers tying this matchup up. Dom Bradley sitting right next to us, former Missouri wrestler, heavyweight, All-American. He's cheering on his, probably his packed his partner here in Seth Nitzel. Let's tell him to open up. We're going to see some scoring here in the last 30 seconds, Tony. We're going to see something here. Someone's going to go after something. We saw action late in the first. Not much in the second, but I am sure, just like you said, Brian, we'll see some here in the third. 20 seconds left. Nitzel needs to try something, anything, to keep his Tigers in this match. Tries for a shot. There it is. Unsuccessful. Good defense by Luffman. Now 10 seconds left. Luffman putting in work now. Tries to snap his head. Now he's got a big grip of his chest, and he'll get called for stalling. Oh, look for a little peek out. They'll keep going, but now it'll hit zeros. And, and look this matchup up. up. Number 30, Indiana Hoosiers, and we welcome you, Matt Sai, Jake Schmidt, alongside Maya Latona. And Maya, we've got a really good matchup here against Indiana, a team that 